Thanks for the privilege once again and uh, welcome to our next class as we continue with our uh, real number system. Real number system. Real number system. As we have stated earlier, we said any number that we can think of outside complex number is called a real number. Now, the um, elementary uh, um, the properties and all set of numbers makes the real number system. And in our previous class, we have talked about the natural number, which we said is the set of uh, counting numbers. Now, in this class, we're going to talk about um, other numbers. Now, initially, we have stated that this uh, real number started from the notion number. And we explained in our previous class how the thing came about, where we begin to consider things that are countable, finitely countable numbers. Now, in this case, after those ones, now it also came to a point. Now, initially, anything that you can count, a number of people in a particular place, now, number of houses in a particular uh, location, you can talk about uh, anything that you can count. You say you can say number of students in a particular class and any other thing that you can think of. Now, those ones we said makes up the natural numbers where you can count one, two, three, four, five, and on on we go. Now, but there is also the possibility that at a particular point in time, there were nothing in that place. There were nothing in that place. In such a case, in such a case, that thing that is into consideration, we don't have anything, it's zero, it's nothing, nothing is there. Like if we say we want to consider in a particular place at a particular time, people that are of age 200,000 years in that particular location, you see such a collection is zero, there is nothing in that set. Now we can say in a particular uh, uh, time period, uh, number of students that are registered for jam in Nigeria, you know, in a particular time, if the set might be zero, or number of students might have, that have, might have registered for a particular course, a first course, first semester course in second semester, such a collection might also be zero. So we are saying that even as we are talking about things that are countable, there is also the possibility that at a particular point in time, there might not be anything in a particular set. In such a case, then, that came where we talk about, we start talking about the, the number zero. That's why we started introducing the number zero. Because at a particular point in time, there is the possibility that there is nothing in that set. Now, initially, we have talked about the set of natural numbers where we have one, two, three, on, 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 which we said is countably infinite sets because it's infinite. This set of natural numbers. But now, there is also the possibility that there might not be anything. If that is true, then we now say 0, 1, 2, 3. Now, so with this notion, we now have 0 also as a number. Now, when you include 0 to the set of natural numbers that we have, this set is called whole numbers. This set is called whole number. This one initially I said is set of natural numbers. Set of natural numbers. So in this one, we now have whole number. So if you look at these two sets, you can see that you can see that the set of natural numbers is contained in the set of all whole numbers. Now in all numbers, we have zero included to the set of natural numbers. So, in other words, you can say that the set of natural number is a proper subset of the set of whole number. It's a proper su subset, the set of all natural number is a proper subset of the set of all um, whole number sets. Or you say the set of whole, the whole number sets is a superset of the set of natural numbers. So, you can see that it's also contained in this one. Now, so if you're talking about natural numbers, you know that you're just talking about the counting uh, 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 numbers, the set of whole numbers, zero is also included in the set of counting numbers. 
Now, the next one I will want to talk about is the set of integers. Set of integers. Integer numbers. Now, the set of integers. Now, all these numbers that we have considered in terms of natural numbers or whole numbers, you can see that they swing, they are all positive numbers. All these numbers are positive numbers. They swing to the they swing to the right positive number. Like when we started with our our number line, we saw one going this way, one going this way, this is zero, one going this way, this one is two, this one is three, on, 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 we go swinging to the right. Why there is another one also swinging to this box? If we have something to the right, for us to have a polygon, there is also the possibility that there are some uh, uh, unique numbers also that uh, ranges to the to the left. Now, if that is true, then we can also talk about the set of integer numbers. Now, the set of integer numbers in this case includes both positive and negative numbers. Both positive and negative numbers. On, on, on we go, but they are also countably infinite set. They are also infinite set. So let's say 2, 1, 0, 1, 2, on, on, on. Set of so this one swing to the to the to the left, this one swing to the right, assuming that zero is the point of uh, origin. Now this kind of collection is what we refer to as the integer set. Set of all integers. We refer to as Z as we mentioned in the other case. Now in this collection, if you look at it critically, you can see that the set of all natural numbers are included. Here, the set of all natural numbers are here. The set of all whole numbers, if you're talking about whole numbers, it ranges from here. Now, together with negative numbers, together with negative numbers that are ranging to the left. So, in other words, somebody can say that the set of natural numbers is a proper subset of the set of integers. Our set of whole numbers is also a proper subset. In other words, you now say the set of the int integer set. Uh, the set of all integers are a super subset, a, a super set of the set of natural and uh, whole number because they are all contained in the set of integers. So this is all that we have. Now, as we did in the other case, let's try to see if uh, these ones are also close in addition or um, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Now, we said for any number to be close in a particular operator, that if after carrying out the operator, irrespective of how they are combined, that the resulting answer figure must be that uh, it must be a collection of that set. Now, for example, if we say we want to consider if this is close under addition, after considering any two numbers from the set of integers, that the resulting number must be an integer. Now let's consider a set, let's say y is equal to negative 2, then x is equal to 3, um, say um, p is equal to uh, 4, and let's say um, z, let's say z is equal to um, 5, is equal to 5. Now, in this case, let's try to check if uh, all these are, okay, let's put 0 here, z is equal to 0. Let's try to see if they are all, uh, they are closed under addition. Now, if we say y plus x, we are saying that y is minus 2 plus 3. Minus 2 plus 3. The answer is 1. The answer is 1. Now, it, and the, the resulting answer, is it a collection in the set of integer? Yes, it is. 1 is there. It's a member of this uh, uh, of this set. Now let's say x plus y is the same thing as 3 plus minus 2, which is the same thing as 1, which is the same thing as 1. So irrespective of the way they are combined, you can see that the resulting answer is a collection of the set of integers. Now we can also say p plus z, which we have 4 plus 0, and the answer is 4, which is also a member of the set of all integers. 
or you say x plus uh, p, which we have 3 plus 4 is equal to 7, which is also a member of this set. So in whichever way you try to combine them, you see that they collect the set of the collection of uh, any two sets from the uh, from the integer set is their, uh, their their sum gives rise to another um, 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 another integer set. So we can conclude by saying that the set of all integer sets, the set of all integers are all closed under addition. The set of all integers are closed under addition. The set of all integers are closed under addition. The integer sets, sorry, the integer set is closed under addition. Is closed under addition. Let's try to see if it's also closed under subtraction. Now we have said let y be minus 2, let x be 3, let uh, z be um, uh, um, 4, and we said let uh, maybe p be 0. Now in this case, let's try to see if they are also closed under subtraction. Now if we say y minus x, we are indirectly saying y is negative 2 minus 3. The resulting figure will be minus 5. The resulting figure will be minus 5, which is also a member of this set. The answer is contained in the integer set. Now, if we say, um, if we say z, if we say z, z minus p, we are saying z is 4 minus 0. The answer is 4, which is also a collection of this set. Now, if we say um, um, z maybe minus y, we are indirectly saying z is 4 minus y is minus 2. And the answer is this one becomes positive, so the answer becomes 6. So you can see that all these answers that we have, the resulting answer, irrespective of the combination, is a collection, is a member of the collection of uh, the integer set. So we can also conclude by saying that the integer set, the set of all integers, is also closed under subtraction. The set of all integers is also closed under subtraction. Is also closed under subtraction is also closed under subtraction let's try to see if it's also closed under multiplication now if we say y times x y times x then we are saying y is minus 2 times x is 3 then we have the resulting answer will be negative 6 which is also which is also a a member of this collection negative 6. Then if we say maybe um, z times x, we are now saying z times x will be z is 4 times x is 3, then we have 12, which is also a collection here. If we say p times x, p times x, which implies p, which is 0, times x, which is 3, the answer will be zero. Zero is also a collection, is also a member of the set of all integers. So you can now say that irrespective of the combination in terms of the product of two uh, 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 members from the integer set, you see that the resulting answer is also a member of uh, the integer set. So in other words, you can say that the set of all integers is also closed on that multiplication. Is also Closed under multiplication is also closed under multiplication. Lastly, let's check if it is uh, closed under division. Now, for that of division, if we say if we say um, um, y 
divided by z. If we say y divided by z, we are going to have y divided by z will give us y is negative 2 divided by z is 4. The answer will be 1 over negative 1 half. 1 over 2. That is a 0 0.5, which is not a member of this set. If we say z divided by z divided by y, we're going to have 4 divided by minus 2, which the answer will be negative 2. The answer will be negative 2, which is a member. And if you consider other cases, you see that in the, just in this one, you can see that it's not consistent. There are some cases where we have a, we, where we have a collection which is not a member of the set of all integers, and in the other case, is a member of the so it's not consistent. Being that it's not consistent, we conclude that the set of all integers is not closed under division. The set of all integers is not closed. The set of all integers, integers is not closed. It's not closed under. It's not closed under division. It's not closed under division. So, uh, given the theory, we can say that the set of all integers is closed under addition, under subtraction under multiplication but not closed under division. The set of all integers is closed under addition, closed under subtraction, under multiplication, but it's not closed under division. So, as we have stated earlier, we said for us to discuss about the real number, we have to consider that of the, the national number, whole number, and integer, rational, and irrational number. In this class, I will want to bring this to a close. Maybe in our previous class, we'll talk about rational and irrational number, which is also a member of the real number set. Thanks for this class. But before we go, as I have always stated, try as much as you can to subscribe on the button so that you get notification whenever we have a new clip. Your subscription doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't cost you anything. It will not request for any financial details, nothing. You just uh, 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 subscribe to, to the, the, click on the subscription button so that you can uh, only get a notification. Thank you and God bless as we look forward to having another class.